Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Sioka Ford of Flemington here in Flemington, New Jersey to take a look at this gorgeous 2024 Ford Explorer ST. This is in agate black metallic paint, the black wheels, the black leather interior with dual cross stitch. It just looks stunning. And of course, February 1st is the day I'm filming this 24 Explorer ST and Ford up at World Headquarters in Michigan unveils the new 2025 Explorer, which is totally redesigned inside and out. So my question for you guys on this video today is, do you buy the 2024 Explorer ST, which is going to have a shorter production run for 2024, or do you wait and pay more for the 2025 Explorer ST? We'll go through this vehicle, we'll check it out, and you let me know at the end how you would handle it. But for now, let's dig in. The front end of this Explorer ST, it looks so sinister in this Agate Black Metallic. Explorer badge blacked out on the hood, ST on the right of the grill in red. I think maybe we should have gone with a black and silver Ford emblem. Right now we got the standard blue oval. Let me know what you think. LED lighting all the way around, functionality in the grill, top and bottom with functional side air curtains. I just think it looks terrific. Let me know what you guys think. As we come around to our wheel and tire setup, ST action. When you go ST, you're going to get this 21 inch machined aluminum alloy wheel in gloss black. You're also going to get bigger rotors, bigger brake calipers because the Explorer ST of course has been redone, or the standard Explorer I should say, to make the ST is given over to Ford Performance and they sprinkle their magic all over the vehicle and part of that is upgraded brakes, upgraded suspension, sports suspension. So you're basically getting the police interceptor package when it comes to that kind of action on this Explorer ST as a ST trim that the average person can buy and not just reserved for the police. So there you have it. But these 21 inch wheels are wrapped in Pirelli Scorpion Zero all season tires, 275 on the width, a 45 series sidewall 21s, all four corners. This one is four wheel drive, but you can also get the ST in rear wheel drive. As we move on back, here is this Beautiful Agate Black. It's totally murdered out. No chrome on the side of this ST at all, which allows those red calipers to stick out and just look wonderful. Let me know what you guys think as we come in. We are color matched on the side view mirror with LED turn signals, color matched on the front and rear door handles. We have the fuel filler cap on the left side. We have a roof spoiler coming off the top. Color matched roof, shark fin antenna, black roof rails, and the twin panel moonroof. The rear end of the Explorer ST, we have the roof spoiler coming off the top, and then we have the wiper blade down below. I would have liked to have seen that tuck that up underneath the roof spoiler, protect it from the elements and car washes, clean up the design a little bit. Ford badge underneath that, Explorer in black underneath that. ST on the bottom right of the tailgate, LED taillights, but standard bulbs for turn signals. And then we have our functional quad tip exhaust and the tow hitch. We'll go over the towing numbers when we take a look at the engine, but for now, let's take a listen to see how this baby sounds. We are under the hood of this 24 ST, and what are we looking at for a power plant? Well, we have Ford's 3-liter EcoBoost V6 engine mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. 400 horsepower, 415 pound-feet of torque, MPGs, 18 in the city, 24 on the highway, 20 combined. The engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. And if you're looking to tow with the ST, 
you can tow up to 5,600 pounds. Before we get into the interior of this ST, you're going to want to know, Mike, I'm loving the ST, I've been wanting one, and I'm torn whether I should buy this or a 24, I should say, or should I wait? You know, because I know that 25 redesign is coming and it looks pretty bad as far as being good. <laughs> so, this is what we're looking at. <clears throat> the Explorer ST is an expensive vehicle. So here we go. Base price for the 2024 Explorer ST four-wheel drive is $52,105. Now, this ST has a lot of options. So we have to add in Equipment Group 401A. That's the ST High Package, the ST Street Pack, and the Ford Copilot 360 Assist Plus. That's an additional $5,890. Then we have to add in an additional $200 for your floor liners carpeted floor mats for the first two rows. Then an extra $1,695 for your twin panel moonroof. Then an extra $995 for the tech package, which gets you the B&O sound system with 14 speakers, the 10.1 inch infotainment screen, and that's vertically mounted, an extra $595 for the ST appearance package, and an additional $355 for an active park assist 2.0. Now, they are giving you a credit. They're taking out the, y, uh, the 4G Wi-Fi hotspot. They're giving you 20 bucks for that. And they took out the 360 degree view cameras. So they're giving you a $500 credit for that. So that means we add in destination and delivery of $1,595 from Ford's Chicago assembly plant. And we have a total MSRP for this vehicle from the factory of $62,760. But if we're looking at maybe waiting until 2025, we know we're going to have a base price increase from Ford on the 25 Explorer. We don't know officially how much on the ST trim, but it's going to be a few thousand dollars. That's my guess, considering all the work they put in to the redesign. They got to try to recoup it somehow. But anyway, let's check out the interior. Starting with our front door panel, look how, I just think it looks great. We're looking at soft touch along the top, and then we have more soft touch. Actually, this is leather right in here. And then you have the red and blue dual cross stitch. Looks fantastic. Goes right into your brushed aluminum, door handle, three memory seat settings, the B&O speaker right here in the door, and there's actually two of them one here and one down below and then here are your mirror controls and of course we have the power fold mirrors that you can manually do that by pushing the button or they'll fold in when you lock the car some gloss black here around the grab handle which could get some fingerprints might have liked them to do something different here let me know what you think and then a nice large, large door pocket in here really looking good as we move into our foot box Nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator, but be, this being an ST, I think I would have liked to have aluminum finish on the pedals. Let me know what you think. Then here are the Explorer All Season Mats, and then we have the Ford Performance door sill plate to welcome you to the vehicle, because this is a Ford Performance vehicle. Power seats for the driver and the front passenger. Ebony black, that's what this is called, leather with the blue and red stitching all the way up. Nice soft bolstering. Nice soft headrest, ST right here embossed into each front seat. And the insert is Alcantara suede material right here. Looks gorgeous, really well executed interior. Passenger door panel, same action, same materials as the driver, except we don't have memory seats for the front passenger. Then we have soft touch, some of this black trim design in here, nice texture to it. Really like how they did that. And then, nice large glove box. Now our infotainment screen, this is what comes with the upgraded uh, tech pack. This is the 10.1 inch vertically mounted SYNC 3. And yes, in 2024, we still have SYNC 3. 
I've been harping on Ford the last two years to go SYNC 4 in the Explorer because they have SYNC 4 in the Escape and the Edge now. Why not this one? But not to worry, in the 2025 redesign, you're going to get a standard 13.2 inch SYNC 4 system in Explorer. But for now, we got SYNC 3, wired CarPlay, wired Android Auto, pinch to zoom is pretty responsive, but not as good as 4, that's for sure. We can go to our home. We can go ahead and add a device. Right now I have the audio off. We can go to our menu. We get our screen view traffic list, change our navigation settings, find out where you are in case you're lost, work on your favorites button. We can go to our audio. We can get our Sirius XM going and all that jazz in here. We can hit our sources, and that'll tell you exactly where the music source is, where it's coming from. We can go to our phone and Bluetooth our phone. We can go ahead and go back to our nav menu. We can go to the apps where we have that action. And then we can go to our settings where we can go ahead and set up our clock, change how this, the way we want the sound to come in. We can go ahead and, again, Bluetooth, you get your automatic updates over the air. So it's not a bad system, but it's a bit outdated considering most other Ford products have SYNC 4 right now. But as we go to reverse, we have top half of the screen is your backup camera, nice and clear with your uh, center toe line. So they got you covered there, but no 360 in the ST. That was not put in here because of the issue Ford has had with SYNC 3 not working properly with the 360 degree view cameras. They'll be back though in the ST when we're going 2025 in SYNC 4. So now, engine stop start right here on the top, down below, you got your four-way hazards, volume and tuning knobs. Underneath that, we have our redundancies for our heat and air, right down here if you don't want to use the screen. Here's our three-stage heated seats, three-stage ventilated seats, and a heated steering wheel for the driver and the front passenger. So they got you set there. And then we have a little compartment down here that's silver and not gloss black plastic. So I like that. We can just go ahead and push this up. And when this opens up, we get a 12 volt, a USB-A and a USB-C in a place for storage or to slide your phone in. Here is the dial that's going to take you through this 10 speed automatic with a manual so you can use the paddles. And then we have our drive modes right here, which we'll go through when we see the dash. Electric emer uh, emergency brake, auto vehicle hold, engine auto stop start off, traction control off, hill descent control, and this is your park assist. So that's what that is. Two cup holders, the Ford key fob right here, looking good. Unlock, lock, remote start, pop the tailgate, panic button, and it says ST on the back, so that's a nice touch. And now a really nice and soft armrest dual stitching all the way around, open that up in a nice area for storage with another 12 volt, and your wireless charging pad is right on the front of your center armrest, right in there, you just slide your phone in. ST steering wheel, love the steering wheel, nice perforated leather with again the dual red and blue stitching, Ford badge on the horn button, ST down here, flat bottom wheel, give it a sportier feel and make it so easy to get in and out of this Explorer. Plus it's a big SUV and I got plenty of room in here at five foot 11. Flat black on our switch gear on the left, you're gonna have your adaptive cruise control and safety suite controls, as well as your radio volume. And then on the right side, it's where you're gonna have your telephone voice commands and controls for the digital dash. So they got you covered there. Here are the paddles. These are plastic. I don't like these, please Ford. Let's put some magnesium ones on here, make them silver in color or make them black in color. I don't care, but the plastic ones just don't cut it, but they're here. So you can go down up and down this 10 speed automatic manually. Now we have our turn signals and our high beams over here on the left front and rear wiper over here on the right. Now down over here on the left side, this is where we can pop the tailgate. We can adjust our headlights, turn on or our fog lamps on or off right there, bright and dim the dash. Now, as far as our wheel goes, we have an electric tilting and telescoping wheel. So Ford has you covered there. 
with the electric and you have the safe exit, which means if you have your driving memory seat set up for you and then you turn the car off and open the door, the seat will move back and this wheel will move up to let you out easier. I do love that feature. And then we go to our all digital dash, looks beautiful, and now we can check out our drive modes. So here we go. We're going to start all the way to the left. Excuse me, all the way to the left. And we start on tow haul. One click to the right. We go to sport, which is the way we're going to rock today. And then we can get eco. And then normal. And then slippery. And then trail. If you want to take this off road, I don't know, take an ST off road. And then we can go to deep snow and sand. So they got you covered for a lot of different drive modes. That's for sure. But we're going to stick with sport on the drive today. That's for sure. And then obviously you can look at other information on the screen. You can select a screen theme and go com screen. Or you can decide what you want to have up on your screen to see. So that's pretty cool. And then we can go back. And then we can go back again, and then we can just come down in the pages and see other information that you may want to have up while you're driving down the road. So it looks really good, and it's really easy to figure out. So I do like how they have it set up. The overhead console in, our, in the Explorer ST, there's a spot for your shades. Then, if you want your LED lighting, you come on and off and you open and close the door. You don't have to do anything. Just leave all the buttons off, and boom, it comes on when you open the door. When you close it, it goes off. Twin panel roof, this is where we're going to open the glass. This is where we're going to open the shade. So it's one touch. And if this is a Ford roof, that means it should stop halfway, and it does. Then you push it a second time, and it goes back over your mid-row passengers. And then you just hit the glass, and that opens up for you. Wind buffeter comes up. Back it goes. Easy peasy, one, two, three. One touch close on the glass. And you can tilt it as well. And then one touch to bring back the shade. And again, it should stop halfway. And it does. And you hit, oops. There we go. It's a sensitive button. I clicked it twice. That's what happened. And now it's closed. Easy peasy, one, two, three. Sun visor with vanity and a light. Does it slide? Yes, it does. And this is where your garage door programmables are on the back of your sun visor. Getting in the mid row of the Explorer, one thing I did want to show you is the door panel is just like the front with the soft touch and the leather and your dual stitching in red and blue. Looks gorgeous. You got security shades on either side as well. So that's a nice touch. Now, the driver's seat is set for my driving position. We'll hop on in. Easy piece to get in. Big vehicle, plenty of room for my head, shoulders, and knees at five foot 11. We have the leather all the way down, seat pocket behind the driver and the front passenger. And then the command center here in the back where you got your climate control back here that you can set up at however you want it. We'll just make it a little bit more moderate. And then you have two stage heated seats for both mid row passengers. And then two USB C's and a home power source. So they got you covered here in the mid row of the Explorer. Nicely done. And again, that other side of the door panel in the back looks just the same as the front. So we'll just give you a, a double dose. There's your front door panel. Here's the rear door panel. Looking the same. Captain's chairs. Beautiful leather with the headrest, with the stitching. Ebony. Still have the Alcantara insert. And look at the size of these captain's chairs armrests. That's what I'm talking about. You can put a lumberjack's arm on here and they'd be comfortable. So beautifully done by Ford. And in between the captain's chairs, there's no console. So they give you cup holders right down here on the bottom of the center console. So you're pretty much covered here in the back of this Explorer. Getting in row number three, here is the mid-row captain's chair. We're going to move this out of the way. But before we do that, there is a bar underneath here. And that'll let you pull this up and you can slide this back and forward depending on how much leg room you need. So that's a good touch. Now, here's the button. You just pull it and push the seat forward. And now you have some room to get in. Not a ton of room, but enough. 
And now we're back here in row number three. Now I'm going to pop up this headrest so you can see that it's not like the other headrests. It's skinnier. It's more like a, a paddle. But you still got the stitching. You still have the leather seating so they didn't cheap out as far as that goes. And in the back here, I have plenty of room for my head, shoulders. But my knees are a little high, but not bad. And then I got heat and air and some lighting back here. So if I slide over behind the one that's already in place, as you can see, I have enough room. Now, at my height, I don't know if I'd want to be back here on a long trip, but I certainly can be back here for a while. But one thing that they don't have in the back, they got the cup holder and a place to store stuff, but they don't have any connectivity for row number three in the 2024 Explorer on either side. And that's been an issue for this vehicle. So in 2025, there will be two USB-Cs in row number three of the Explorer. Getting in the rear end of your Explorer ST, pop it from the key fob, pop it from the dash, or you can come to the back and there's an arrow right by where the R is in Explorer. There's that down arrow. You hit the button. Nice electric assist on the way up. Nice electric assist on the way down using this button. And for 2025, an electric tailgate will be standard on all Explorer trims. Of course, they're going from eight trims down to four, but that's a nice touch now making it standard. Now, with all rows up, 18.2 cubic feet of space in the back of the Explorer, that's a good number. Here are the carpeted mats that say Explorer and have the dual stitching on them as well, red and blue. So that looks really nice. And now, underneath here, we have an area, oops, we have an area for storage for extra storage, I should say. I'm gonna take these mats out real quick because this is an adjustable floor. You can actually take this out and you can make it an adjustable floor. And then you have side storage areas right here and right here. Now behind the tow hitch, I'm thinking we're gonna have a spare tire and we don't. So is there one underneath here? I can't get it out, so I'm no, I don't know. If anybody knows for sure if we got one in here, please let me know, but I don't want to mess this up while I'm on camera. Here we go, 12 volt right here with some lighting, and then we can power fold down row number three. So that's a nice touch. So we can either do one at a time or both together. So we'll hit the button and we'll put both down together and now we have even more room with the third row down. Let me know if you use the third row or do you rock with the third row down in your Explorer. But in order to get the mid row down, we have to go around each door. We have to hit this and lower the seats. Come around on this side and lower the seats like that. Now, with all rows down, 87.8 cubic feet of cargo space in the back of the Explorer, and that is a big number in this mid-size three-row SUV class. Nice job. Explorer window sticker, my apologies for the glare, but it is one cloudy day out, and these are tinted rear windows. 24 Explorer ST four-wheel drive. Standard equipment across the top. There's our options. Total MSRP coming from Chicago, Illinois by rail, or excuse me, by truck convoy. Fuel economy. Crash ratings. Let's take this baby out for a spin. All right, we're right on the road in this 24 Explorer ST. And great visibility out the windshield, side glass, side view mirror, rear view mirror, no problem. We have blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, all that jazz is in this Explorer ST. But of course, we have the Ford Performance version of the Explorer. 
ST standing for sport technology. They have put the goods in this Explorer performance wise vis a vis suspension upgrades, brake upgrades. We have the strut tower brace up in the engine compartment to stiffen up the front end. We got four wheel drive to get all this power to the ground right away without delay and we still have a good ride and now we're riding in sport mode on a really rough farm back road and even though I'm being jostled a little bit this thing is tight and right. I'm getting no vibrations in the through the chassis into the to the driver compartment at all. The steering is well done. It is tight. It's a little heavier. It's not really light, which I like. And the other advantage of this Explorer, and frankly any Explorer in the mid-size three-row SUV market, is its rear-wheel drive. And then when you want to go four-wheel drive, it becomes four-wheel drive. Most other three-row midsize SUVs are front-wheel drive, and then they go to all-wheel drive. So with the rear-wheel drive, you're just getting a much better driving SUV than a front-wheel drive biased SUV. And you can really tell this thing just moves beautifully down the road, and the steering is perfect seats just like explorers of the past so comfortable so soft so nice you can adjust the bolstering get it just right for your back which i really really like here comes the sharp left turn look at that just whips right around no problem planted to the ground no problem big bump over the bridge no problem we're going to come up here we'll test out our upgraded braking system three two one look at that just throws out the anchors stops on a dime and gives you change now we're going to take off see what this engine can do and i'll be quiet so you can hear this wonderful sound talking about now we'll come down the road here we'll take this turn see how she does on the brakes look at that yeah a little bit of roll not bad though now we'll go ahead turning radius is a bit wide here because we got 275s all the way around in this Explorer which means this turning radius is going to be wide we're looking at 19 and a half feet not bad though it got around no need for a k-turn and now down the road we go now what we'll do here is we'll throw this into manual and we'll try out these paddles see how it does nobody's behind me so here we go that 10 speed is boom 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 and in 2025 they're going to retune the 10 speed to make it even better in the st but downshifts look how fast that is rolling start at a second just fantastic Ford Performance has done an unbelievable job with this Explorer. I thought it was great in 2023. I think it's great now, and I'm sure it's going to be great in 2025 with the redesign. But if you think about, and this is what I want you to think about before you answer. 2024 Explorer, the way this is optioned, you're looking at just a, a skosh under 63. So let's call it 63. That's a lot of money for an Explorer, but you're getting a lot of performance in this vehicle. So let's say we moved to 2025 now. Let's say you decided to wait. So we're now in 2025 with the redesign. 
we know the base price increase on the base trim is going to be five grand between 2024 and 2025. Will that cascade over to the other trims in that exact dollar amount? I don't know. But let's say it's going to be two, three thousand more. Let's say the 25 Explorer ST is going to be three grand more. I'm just picking that number out of a hat. So now it's going to be 66. And you're going to get all the same stuff that this one has, the same engine, the same upgrades in suspension and brakes and everything else that's already in this one. The only real difference you're going to have is the Sync 4 with the 13.2 inch screen and a retuned 10-speed auto to make it even better than this one for an extra three, maybe four grand. So let me know what you would do. Do you buy this one? Or do you go wait for the 2025 and spend more? How much more? We're only speculating, but it's going to be more. We know that. Let me know what you would do in the comments. I really want to hear from you. And also, if you're in the mid-row, three-row SUV segment, if you're looking at a vehicle, put the Explorer on your list. Because the Explorer is the all-time best-selling SUV in the United States since it came into existence in 1991 and it's still rear wheel drive and it drives fantastic and it's really comfortable put it on your list if you're looking for a vehicle in this class i don't think you'll be disappointed but if you want this performance st i want to know here from you guys buy this one now or wait for the redesign and hope it's not too much more expensive than this let me know in the comments or are you going to go somewhere else completely in this segment? Let me know that in the comments as well. But I want to thank Sioka Ford of Flemington for allowing the channel access to this 24 Explorer ST and Agate Black for a review today. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing. Turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.